what's going on everyone it's your boy Yats KHZFM here and today you are doing a first episode of a new save on Football Manager 2021 I'm very excited for this save so let's get straight into it <laughs> Um, this is a new save on Sunderland, the Black Cats. Um, as many of you guys may know, Sunderland have fallen from grace. You know, they they were always, me growing up, Sunderland were always a Premier League team. And now to see them in League One, it's shocking. You know, that is a fall. The same, similar to Bolton and many other clubs, Preston, so many other clubs that they've fallen. This is Sunderland are, aren't a team that belong in League One. They belong in the Premier League. You know, they belong with the with the big clubs in England. You know, the King Power Stadium, as we'll see in a minute, is a massive stadium. It is a stadium much too big for League One. So uh, yeah, the reason I chose Sunderland, as I said before, it's a rebuild. You know, fallen from grace, but also as you know. Uh, right now we've got the you know the documentary on Netflix, the Sunderland Until I Die documentary. I watched through that. That's really good. You know, it's inspired me to take this club back to where the fans deserve it to be. And also, uh, Phil Parkinson has recently been uh, sacked as manager. Um, so I thought, you know what? Let's take it. Let's you know take it by the scruff of the neck, really, and let's get this club back to where it should be. So uh, yeah, as you can see. Look at this stadium of light has, has almost got fifty thousand capacity. You know that's a that's not a stadium for League One side. So that's a Premier League stadium. You know they've got superb training facilities, excellent youth facilities. You know this is a this is a massive team. The reputation's up there. It's probably gone down as of recent because of what's happened to their club. But I assure you, we'll bring that back to where it should be. You know. The club has won. They've they've won the English Premier Division. You know they've won they've won the top flight. You know they they've won many trophies. They've got FA Cups. They've got they've got so many championships. Even then they shouldn't be in the championship. They should be all the way at the top. You know, so uh, let's let's just go straight into it. So this is what uh well Stuart Donald thinks the best XI is. Um, you got O'Brien up top. Aidan O'Brien, decent. Uh, you got Elliot Embleton, Chris Maguire, and you got Max Power and many other players. So uh, as you can see, this is the expectations or um, the club vision set by Stuart Donald, the chairman. And as you can see, the expectations are not easy. You know, they've set hard expectations. They they expect us to reach a playoff minimum. You know, this club they want to get back to where they was. So. With the help of the chairman, the backroom staff, I think as a club, if we come together, we can bring you know these English giants back to where they were. And as a, I'm a Man United fan, you know, so I, I support one of the big English clubs, and I see Sunderland as another big English club. You know, maybe not up there with the Liverpool and the Arsenal's of the world, but they're still a top Premier League team. So we're gonna prick them back to the Premier League and even take them beyond where they was. You know. So, uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so first thing I want to do is take a look at the squad. So, uh, let's do these based on ability. Okay, so the squad is, is, is decent, you know. There's not much squad depth, that is one thing I will say. But I want to look at, you know, the key players of this team. Bailey Wright. I know this guy. He's a he's a top top Australian footballer. You know, a lot of people in Australia like him. He's a decent. He'll be. He is 27 years old, so he's still got a couple years left in him. Um, he will be our right back. But one thing about him is he he doesn't look too attacking, and I like to play attacking football. You know, I like to play the way Sir Alex sees football, attacking, attack, 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 and that's the kind of manager I like to be. So he isn't very attacking, but he can work on it. You know. Um, they they did buy him last year, so uh, he is quite relatively new at the club, but he'll be he'll be good for us. Uh, Dion Sanderson. Now this guy, I've known him for a while on FM. Uh, I believe he was at Cardiff last year. Yes, he was. He was at Cardiff on loan. I remember that from my last year save. Dion Sanderson. He's another right back, and he's a bit more attacking. I like this kid. He's got he's got a lot of he's got a lot of. Uh, a lot of potential in the game, you know. He's on, he's on loan from Wolves. You know, maybe we might sign him on a regular basis because I really like Deion Sanders and I think he's going to be a top top player. 
this is probably our you know our number one centre back, Jordan Willis. You know he he'll be our he'll be our rock at the back. I'm I'm guessing. And now I want to look at the the captain. You know this is this is the talisman of the team. This guy right here, Max Power, he's the talisman and he's the player that we will work, make this team around. He's 27 years of age, so he's not he's not old, not too old yet, I guess. Um, and he, Max Power, he's he's a top quality player. You know, he he him in real life. Obviously, I don't wanna, I don't wanna um, compare to real life too much. Obviously, this is a game and you don't take it too seriously. But in real life, he's their he's their captain. He's the player that all the fans love. You know, he's the fan favorite, and I. I intend to carry that on, you know, he's got a fairly strong left foot, a very strong right foot, he can use both feet, so he's a, he's a, he'll be a top quality player for us. Now, Will Grigg, he, um, Will Grigg's a bit hit and miss, you know, I, I like this player, you know, I remember when, remember when you played for Wigan, you know the song, Will Grigg's on fire, your defence is terrified, and you fall. Will Griggs on fire, your defence is terrified, Will Griggs on fire, your defence is terrified, Will Griggs on fire, your defence is terrified, Will Griggs on fire. Everybody! Yeah, I remember that song. He he was good for he was really good for Wigan. But um Sunderland last year he wasn't too great. Um let me go into his career stats. As you can see last year he had twenty appearances of Sunderland, only scored one goal. Year before that, only five goals. So he has declined a bit, you know. I remember fifteen around fifteen twenty fifteen. Where's that? Yeah, that's twenty fifteen sixteen. He obviously scored almost thirty goals in one season. You know, that's a that's a top output for a striker. But hopefully we can unlock him again. You know, bring him back to that form he used to have in the past because he was wicked. Uh, Josh Scowen. Uh, he's decent. He's will be a nice midfielder for us, you know, box to box, ball winning midfielder. So it'll be a good powerhouse in the middle. I'm assuming. Uh, Luke O'Neill. So he's also on a right back. You know, we've got a, we've got a lot of right backs, but this is what I mean. This is what I like. See, he can play right back, right wing back, but he can also play midfield. That's good versatility, you know. He he's a player that we can use in different games, different positions. I like players like that. I really like versatile players because you know different tactics against different teams you know you want a player that can play a lot of positions because then he'll keep himself in the team now tom flanagan he he is he's been in for a while i believe he's only been in since 2018 really i thought he's been in for quite a while um tom flanagan we all know about him you know he, he's he's solid you can't really go wrong with him i might look to replace him later on maybe in the championship if we get promoted but he, we know what he's about really um, if I actually go to the club info tab, I want to see here. So Dan Neal, he is what the club see as the highest potential player. He is their young prospect. So I do like the youth academy. I do like using youth players. You know, I I I'm a United fan. That's what that's what we that's what we uh, pride ourselves in as a United fan. You know, the class of '92, many players: Marcus Rashford, uh, David Becker. Many players have come from the youth academy, and I believe in the youth so this guy who will get plenty of playing time under me um i do really like uh, the look of him he, he's a midfielder he can probably play cam um he's, he's learning his trade i guess uh he's got decent mental stats actually for someone of his age which is pretty good he's only 18 so he's got a lot of time in the game to develop but yeah um looks decent he's a he's a decent prospect so yeah, as you can see here, the, uh, the vice captain is Bailey Wright, as I was talking about the Australian himself. So uh, and also the captain is Mac Power. So these these two, uh, I will look heavy, I will rely heavily on in games. You know, I want them to drag Sunderland through through the depths of the English uh, pyramid. You know, the the tiers of the of uh, English leagues. So these two will drag them back to their former glory. Um, by the way, guys, if you do like my skin, the skin I am using is, let's have a look, is TCS21 version 1.0. Uh, it's just a skin that I like. Uh, I, you might see me in videos using different skins here and there. Uh, I might switch it up, you know, depending on what happens. But, yeah, uh, the kits, I've got, also got a kit pack, as you can see. I've got the accurate kits and stuff, so it's decent. Um, 
first thing I want to see actually is do we have any affiliates? We do. So I use affiliate affiliated clubs very heavily. I like to send my players all to one club, and I like to uh, loan players in from affiliate clubs. So uh, we got an affiliate with Darlington and Gateshead. They are in the Vanarama North though, so that is. The league is quite, you know, quite low down. I would want one maybe in the Valorama National League or in League 2, preferably. But we'll see what happens there. I might actually, I might ask the board to ask for a, I might ask the board for a senior affiliate. Just so we can get that started. Because uh, it takes a month to find one. And I do like to loan players in from the clubs, you know, the Premier League, all the youngsters. So, yeah. So if we go back to the players, uh, let's have a look at Lyndon Gooch, the American so he's only 24 years old. This kid is decent, you know. I mean, he's a player that I that hopefully will help me, you know, get promotion, championship, and even to the Premier League. Um, he's one of the focal points of this team. He will be because he's got good potential. He's only 24 years old, and he's already one of their star players. So uh, he, Lyndon Gooch, is someone that's been at uh, Sunderland for a while. I think. Let me have a look. Yeah, he's been here since 2012. Exactly. So he's been here for a while. So. Hopefully, you know, he he he, he was there when they were in the Premier League. Although he didn't, didn't make an appearance until 2016, he, he did play in the Premier League one season. So he does know what it is to play in the Premier League. And hopefully he can be there back there sometime soon. Uh, Chris Maguire, we all know about Chris Maguire. He's, he, he's a good player, but he is ageing, you know. He might be a player that I will use for only, you know, only this season. Maybe not next season, you know. he, he Him and Aiden, not, is it Aiden McGee? Yeah. Him and Aidan McGeady, we all know about them. They don't really need an introduction. But Aidan McGeady also is 34 years old. So outside this season, I don't really see myself using him too much as, you know, he, he is aging a bit. But um, this guy here, uh, R. Bennett, uh, I don't know how you say that. I'm going to say Jajmali. R. Bennett Jajmali, something like that. He is from Kosovo, I believe. Uh, yeah, Kosovo. So he is a he's a young player still 22 years old so hopefully he can develop through uh through game through you know good game time and stuff but he's got really good uh, mental stats he's got great he's got great jumping reach and strength which is really good um but I wouldn't expect anything less from you know an Eastern European uh proper proper Eastern European one thing I did want to look at is actually Will Griggs penalty stats. Yeah, exactly. Penalty stats. He's got 17 penalties. I know that from previous saves. Will Grigg, he rarely misses a pen, doesn't he? Uh, Denver Hume. So he's a he's a player where I am not too sure about him. He's got a high potential, but what he's a player that I actually when I do different saves. So if I like sometimes I like to, do, you know, not other road to glory. So the most recent one I've done is. Dagenham and Redbridge, which is my local team, I live about five minutes from there, from where they play. Uh, Dagenham Redbridge, I do like. Uh, I did a, a save with them this year, and I did sign a Denver Hume, um, which was a great signing at the time. But he didn't really develop, you know. He developed uh, to League One standard, and not even League One standard. He developed to like League Two, and he was okay in the League One. Um, but he didn't really develop past that, which was which was quite uh, sad actually. So. Well, hopefully, maybe it'll change, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, this is the team really. I want to actually have a look at the goalkeeping situation. So we only have two goalkeepers who are relatively around the same ability. You got Lee Burge, who he's been about. He's been about. I uh, I know this guy uh, from previous FM saves. Uh, he's decent, but we might want to look to improve on the goalkeeping situation. He might be okay just for this season. You never know. And then Remy Matthews also around the same ability. He's a, he's a year older, but uh, he's also been about. So, yeah. Um, let's have a look at the under-23 squad, where they actually have a goalkeeper called Anthony Patterson. And he he isn't far too far off the first team uh, ability. So, you know, he's not too far off. Maybe he can overtake the other two keepers. Uh, but my uh, best player in the under-23s is Morgan Feeney. Uh, the Englishman, he's a decent centre back, I guess. Uh, probably from the Everton Academy, I'm assuming. Yeah, probably. Um, he's got he's got decent value for a player with only that ability. So maybe he can improve in the future, and uh, he can join join the squad. 
But yeah, as I said before, the, the focal point of the under-23, the player with the highest potential is Dan Neal. So we will hopefully develop this kid into a, a, a really decent player in the future. And at the under-23s, they've got someone called Luke Chapman, who is their, who's their striker. You know, he, he's a player that will also hopefully develop into a great, great player. So in this save, we start off with a transfer budget of five hundred thousand pounds. So half a million. It's not. It's not. It's not. You know, crazy. Uh, it's not the too low for League One. We got. We'll work with what we've got. But uh, hopefully, you know, maybe we we'll sell some players, raise that, or it might be enough for the first season. So if we have a look at the tactical uh, setup, I'd like to. I do like to use um, quite a, quite an attacking quite an attacking uh, you know system so i'm gonna have a look at the players we've got and you know have a give give myself a general idea of what kind of tactics uh i would like to employ i guess well we'll start with employing and i'll come back to you guys once i've done that okay so this is the tactic i've come up with uh simple four two three one you know with a you know shadow striker advanced forward and inverted wingers this will change depending on which players we have available sometimes i do like to use you know the inside forwards and all of that but this is what i've got so far you know it's a it's a quite attacking you got all the you got the front you got the front four here all on attacking the wing backs are on support but mm, i might change that to attacking depending on which opposition we have uh, and then I've got the two ball playing centre back, ball playing centre backs um, on the cover, as I do like my centre backs, you know, to go up a bit, pass through, you know, have a high line. It's 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 just the way I like to play. And then I've got a shadow shadow striker. I was about to say shadow striker. I've got a sweeper keeper, and I'm using Luke Matthews for this. So yeah, obviously we have got pre season, so I can see what works for the team, what doesn't, all of that. Hopefully, you know. Get me the team can, uh, although I'm not really familiar with this formation right now, but I would do during the course of the training, they will be quite familiar. Okay, so uh, I think we should go for the team meeting. So uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce myself as the new Sunderland manager, uh, Max Power. On behalf of the team, I would like to welcome you and look forward to playing under your management. So I want to make a couple promises, you know, let's see. Uh, I know the backroom team needs to be improved, and that's something I'll be focusing on. I do like to bring in my own staff because I like I believe in delegation. You know, uh, I think you shouldn't if if you're not you know you if you're not a professional, what you're doing? Well, not a professional, but if if you're not the best at what you're doing, then you don't need to do it. You know, delegate it. I like to get a director of football to delegate certain stuff. I like to send my sister manager to some of my press conferences. It's, it just helps out, so that's good. Uh, but also, I'll I'm gonna say I'll be making some improvements in goal. I think because uh, I, I think we need a new keeper. But uh, yeah, that's not didn't have a great you know uh, didn't have a great reaction to that, but that's fine. And let me just say, if anyone wants to take a coaching course, you're more than welcome to. And then that's enough promises. Okay, now let's let's talk about the goals for the season. I think we. We should get automatic promotion this season. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I don't think we are good enough. Nope. I think I think we are. You know I'm very confident. So if they think it's too ambitious, then you have to work harder. You know I don't. I want I want to set standards and expectations from day one. And if you're not ready to work, then I don't want I don't want you playing for this club because this club deserves to be all the way up there. Uh, so I'm gonna say. That's the sort. Uh, that wasn't the sort of reaction I was hoping for, but I respect what everyone's had to say. Uh, give a good account of ourselves in the FA Cup, and that's exactly what I wanted to say. So uh, that's that. It wasn't a great first meeting, but it's not too bad. Um, and actually, I think that's where we are going to leave the first episode of this series so i hope you all enjoyed this video uh, let me know in the comments down below what you want to see you know what players you might want me to sign uh, let me know if if you know how you think sunderland should play or what sunderland means to you as a club maybe you're a sunderland fan or maybe you you are all like me and you support one of the big six teams in england and you also think that sunderland deserve to be up there but uh yeah this has been a great first episode hopefully and uh let me know. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.